Hey everyone, John Henry here, Sling Chef Futures Trading Group. Welcome back. Hopefully you had a great day of trading today. It's a little slow and a little bit weird. Thinker Swim Platform is still up and down, and who in the world knows what's going on with that? I'm sure lawsuits will be coming down the pipe for them pretty soon uh, at this rate. But uh, overall, we're going to be looking at a very interesting topic. It's a user-submitted question from Scott Fruwald. Thank you very much for the submission. Uh, we're going to be looking at support and resistance levels and how we choose the stops and targets. Uh, now, I think that was initially intended to be potentially two different videos, but they go hand in hand because realistically, support and resistance levels should be where your stops and targets are. So they kind of coalesce together uh, pretty nicely. So we can kind of use that as a singular topic. Uh, now, when we're looking at support or resistance levels, really the big thing that I want to see is a lot of bounces and tests of those areas. And it's got to be visually apparent. I don't want something that's a little bit fuzzy or anything like that. I, I want it to be pretty straightforward. Uh, as an example, if you look at the resistance up here, it's pretty obvious that when the market comes up to this zone, there's a lot of resistance and the market rejects off of it. And when it tries to come back up, it's immediately sold back down. So this time around, right, they tried to poke their head back up, they got back up again. All they managed to do was get into a three press top and rotated right back down again. That's what you expect to see at these types of areas. I'm not thinking being a buyer up here, right? Remember, breakout pullbacks are all fine and dandy, but they're also the lowest probability end of the totem pole. Really what you want to wait for is the breakout pullback and then be a buyer on the next one after there's been proof. Uh, so seeing this move to the upside and then immediately fail, everybody knew it was going on as soon as it started dumping. Uh, and all of those buyers exited and it flushed it right back down. And that creates that obvious zone of support or resistance. Now, little little tidbits of information like the market breaking above that uh, can give you some info as well like maybe this level is getting a little bit weak it does look as though there are some shorter term levels and longer term levels and all of that fun stuff and I'm not going to go into the psychology of each and every individual level but really what you're looking for is starting from the top down and getting the big levels first right the big obvious swing highs swing lows or zones of interest and then you just kind of work your way down from there and see which ones are still working, which ones aren't. Uh, as long as they're still showing that the market is respecting those levels and you have every reason to believe that it's going to continue respecting those levels, whether it's support or resistance. Um, and if the market chops through it, it's generally going to respect it on the other end. Uh, but either way, you can see how long these levels last. I mean, we just had a bounce there today uh, on that big flush down. It came right back to that same level of support that's been in place since August 12th. Um, so that's why you got to keep an eye on these levels of support or resistance and see, is the market still respecting it? The last time the market was here, it showed us that it was respecting it. So we have to believe that it will again. Same thing goes for the highs. The last time the market was here, it showed that it respected it. I have to believe it will again. Uh, once it shows that there might be some level of support there, or that that level starting to break down, then I've, I lose a little bit of interest or start shifting gears to the long side. And here, the last time we were here, we showed bullish support. So I have to believe that the next time we come back to that, we're going to find bullish support. And once we start seeing where the market's just not really responding to it anymore, it doesn't really care about it, then we can get rid of it. And sometimes that means that you have levels on your chart for a long period of time, and that's, there's nothing wrong with that. That just means that they're better. Uh, the longer they are on the on the chart, I mean, as far as I'm concerned, it's kind of like wine. <laughs> they get better with age. Uh, so when we're looking for them, you're just looking for as many tests as possible uh, when when we're talking about support and resistance. Now, when we approach this from a different angle, looking at where do we find our stops and targets, well, that's all based on support and resistance as well. Uh, as an example, if I want to be a buyer, it doesn't make much sense to be a buyer way up here because, well, realistically, all of the support is further down here uh, or even potentially a little bit further. The last time we were here, we showed support. Uh, chances are they will again. So if the market dips down, that's where I want to be a buyer. Uh, and that's what these buyers did. They just did it very aggressively and a rocket shipped out of there. So when we're looking at those areas, I already know my entry point. I want it to be down here, right? I want it to be cheaper. Uh, the last time we were at any area uh, up at these highs, 
the market sold. So the last place that I want to be a buyer is up here. I want to be a seller up here. Now, if you're long, that could be a seller to take profit. But regardless of the situation, this isn't where you want to be doing it. We want to be doing it down where the market's cheap. Now, sometimes the market is considered cheap when it's at a level of rising support uh, or resistance, right? Like a trend uh, line at the bottom. So if I'm a buyer down here, I can look to be a buyer and give it a you know a reasonable buffer uh, as long as it's staying around that area, give or take 10% or so, uh, then you're probably holding true to that pattern. But once it starts breaking down past that reasonable amount that people would expect it to, that's when everybody starts jumping ship and you get that panic slide because nobody wants it anymore. Everyone was buying it assuming that the channel would hold. It didn't hold they all jump ship and then you get this big giant slide off. Uh, and that same thing can be found all over the place. In in any major level of support or resistance where something's going on or there were, where there was a very big move, chances are there was a level of support or resistance that came into play there that caused that panic. Uh, so that's always kind of in the back of your mind when you're sliding off into those levels. Well, what's causing that slide? probably a big level of support or resistance that has held or maybe rejected or whatever the case may be. So when it comes to support or resistance and entry levels, really the, the entries, that's where you would expect structure to come uh, come to fruition, right? If I'm looking at this as a downward level of support that I want to be a buyer of, then realistically, I don't want to be a buyer unless we're down at that support level. And when the market starts breaking out of that, showing you that you're potentially wrong or that the market isn't doing what you expect it to do, then you cut the trade. And that usually depends on the way that the market is coming into it. So going over stops, generally you want to base it on the current market situation. If the market's very aggressive, you're probably going to have to use wider stops, uh, which should make sense because the market is slippier at that point in time. It goes further than you would expect it to go. When the market's grindy and slow and it's not really doing much of anything, you can get away with tighter stops because the market's not doing anything either. So it does sort of depend on the context of what the market's doing, which is why I talk about it in percentages. Uh, as an example, if I were to measure this leg to the downside, uh, well, that's a very aggressive leg and it's very just is big and fast, right? There's, there's no questioning that it was obvious sellers wanted to do something here. Uh, so if I'm going to use that as my measurement to be a buyer down here at the level of support, I have to anticipate that, hey, this is a pretty big level uh, that we're just charging down from. I might not want to be the first one to the party. And if I am, if I'm just going to be a buyer down here on channel support, I've got to buffer this by you know at least 20% of the move, meaning that from high to low, wherever that low ends up being, I'm going to buffer it by a decent amount. You could even utilize, because you don't know where that low is, you could utilize the previous swing and say, okay, based on this swing, uh, I could go back and say, you know what, I don't know that I'm going to want it if it starts breaking, you know, more than 50% of that market structure. Uh, and that 50% would be somewhere down here or breaking 20% of it, which that would have stopped you out. Uh, it all depends on the approach that you want to take on that uh, as far as the probabilities. But they're all based on or designed around levels of support or resistance. So when you understand one, you might not necessarily understand completely the other one, but it's going to be there uh, whether you kind of wanted it to be or not. So uh, they kind of go hand in hand. Hopefully you found that useful, interesting, entertaining, uh, something, uh, well, entertaining. I don't know how entertaining uh, stops and targets are, but targets are fun. Uh, but that's about it. If you have any questions about it, feel free to send me an email, jhb at ssftg.com. Uh, as always, in the comment section, if there's any videos that, want, that you want me to cover for you, feel free to drop a comment. I usually am always watching those, so uh, that might just end up being the next video. Make sure to swing on over to ssftg.com. Click on the big banner on the top of the page. That is the three-day trial. Totally free. Uh, you can log in and see what we're all about for a couple days, and uh, yeah, we can go from there. So that's going to do it. Enjoy. I hope you had a great day of trading, and we will see you all in the next one. Thanks.